Hi y'all, it's Pam with Pink Dragonfly Wings and we have a new adventure today. We are going to make a journal cover out of this box. Okay, um, the box that I'm using is just a Ritz Crackers box and uh, so we're going to start. So, we're going to first tear this end of the box apart. We're going to open it up and the bottom. If I can see the bottom. Uh, I think we're going to have to cut it. That's alright. So we're going to tear this apart. Let me move my glue sheet because I am going to need to um, Well, I can't even get into the box. There we go. Alright, so we have opened it up. Now, this part of the box, right here, this is going to be our spine. So, we're going to cut off, let's see... Um, we want our book to be about nine by six. Let's, yeah, because the papers, when we fold them in half, are five and a half. So let's make it six, six inches. So we're going to measure from this line. This center line right, or this uh, back spine right here, and we are going to measure to seven. Nope, to six. Sorry. Let's make it about six and a quarter. Okay, and we'll come up here and do six and a quarter. We'll turn it around and do the same thing on this side. Six and a quarter. And six and a quarter. And then I'll use my, uh, my cutting blade. If I can find it. We'll line this up. Tell you what, let's cut off this excess here first. from here to here. You can tell this is not really my strength, but we're going to get it done. Okay. And then we'll line up our, our marks at six and a quarter. Well, Goodness, that did not even begin to go straight. And then we have this one little section right here.
Now then, there are our edges. And there's our book, our little journal. Now this is going to be six and a quarter by almost seven and three quarters. So that'll make a nice size little book. I keep these little things because I use them for all kinds of things. Uh, these little nubbins I'll probably throw away. Throw away that one. But these little pieces I keep for other use in other things. And so let's get our paper back out. Close up our knife. Now, this is going, like I said, this is going to be our spine. And this is coming up just a little bit here. So I am going to reinforce that with some Fabrifix glue. Just because it grabs really fast. It's really strong. And it's very slow to come out of the bottom. <laughs> There we go. While we're waiting, while we're waiting, we're going to put some extra glue right in here. And we all know that the spine of our book gets lots of wear and tear. So I want it to really be strong. So the first thing that I am going to do is reinforce this with some tie-back tape. I bought this at my regular hardware store here in town. And uh, it works beautifully. I'm going to cover this seam over just a little bit. And down. Trying not to let it get on my paper because once it sticks, it is stuck. So we'll fold that back over here on this side. And that'll just give it a little bit of reinforcement with the curvatures of the spine as it bends. So um, we'll put another piece over here um, on the other side. Overlap it just a little bit okay. now this is all going to be covered up so what it looks like right now I don't really care um, I think I will go ahead and just for, I don't know, posterity sake, we'll go ahead and put some on the other, other side. Like I said, it's all going to be covered up, so we're not going to have to worry about it. But this just, it works just like the tie-back sheets, or the tie-back sheets that are used in, um, uh, mailing envelopes and that kind of thing, but I don't get, I used to get a lot of those in the mail, and so I used them a lot, but I don't get them very often anymore, and I hate to take them from the post office, so I found this tape, and it works wonderfully. Now, I'm going to kind of train this paper now to, uh, to crease like I want it to. So I'm going to use my bone folder and really crease it. And I'll do the same on this side to really crease it because I want it to I want it to learn how to go where I want it to go, not where it wants to go. Kind of play with it a little bit, loosen it up a little bit. And there we go. So we have our little book. Now then, our, our spine has been reinforced. And the paper that I have chosen to use today is this absolutely beautiful 
paper. It is Fairy Whispers, uh, designed by Jen, Sh Jen Bishop, and it is a Blue Fern production. So I bought this online. Absolutely beautiful. It's got some beautiful designs on the other side, but for the cover, I wanted it to be um, more of a, of a, a canvas than, than a, a specific picture. And then that way I can, I can decorate it however I want to decorate it. So I'm hoping, I found this little piece, this little sample online. And I think it was in a, an, an Etsy shop. And I thought that would be beautiful on this book cover somehow. So I haven't figured out exactly how I'm going to do it, but I think it's plenty big enough. It will definitely fit the front of our book with a little extra. So I'm going to have to play with that a little bit, but I think that will look absolutely stunning with this paper. So that was my goal. That was why I chose the paper that I chose. So, I'm going to set one of these over. Now, another thing that I do, I cut these little things off of the bottom, you know, that comes at the bottom of the paper to tell you what it is and all that kind of stuff. And I keep these because the other side makes beautiful accents. And you can use it. It's just right about the right width. Uh, and so I keep those. Um, sometimes they have patterns. Sometimes they have extensions of the paper, um, that kind of thing. If you wanted to use this on your paper and not cut it off, you could certainly do that and give yourself just a little bit more. Uh, I don't know if y'all can see that or not, but just this came from here. And so just a little bit more, um, you get just that extra half an inch if you want to leave it on there, but you have to be using this side. So I cut it off. I, I'm not going to need that extra for my journal page. Now then, um, this is a plenty, plenty big enough piece of paper. Um, and so I think that I am going to let it hang over just a little bit here so that I can wrap that around and this double edging of um, of the cardstock will also help to reinforce our spine and uh, give us a little bit more strength. So what I've done is I'm going to cover the front of this in double stick tape um, because I want it to lay down. I'm going to extend that just a little bit so that it will hang off. So I'm going to put my paper away because it will stick to it like a magnet. And I'll cover it just, I'm going to go ahead and cover the whole thing even though I'm covering only half right now. Okay. And we'll do another one, making sure that I didn't move my paper out of the way. Almost got it stuck. That's how I roll. And get another sheet here and cut it. And then just because I work better from this direction, I'm going to put another piece here. And then I want to fold these sides over so that it really sticks to the edge because I'm going to fold this paper around the edges and I want to make real sure that that sticks. See what I mean? It sticks to anything it can attach to. <laughs> Okay, and we'll do this. 
make sure that is burnished down really really good this double stick tape sticks much better when it's been burnished don't ask me why that's the way it goes so make sure you do that really really well all right so i am ooh, don't want to do that i am going to start with the back i'm going to use my paper and see about there so that ought to work except it's on the wrong side but let's try putting it on the right side and I am going to center the edge of this paper right here the edge of this paper right here in the center more or less of our spine okay again we need to train this paper kind of like kids have to train them to go in the right direction okay so about halfway through and about centered on the page here I'm not worried about this because this is going to fold in here okay so what we're going to do is undo our tape to right there this comes off really quick really easy but you have to be really careful because like I said once you get this tape close to something it's gonna stick let's go ahead and tear this off about like that just because it will keep these things from flopping around and then when we get ready to do the other side we can tear that okay so now we have our back tape our back tape and ready to lay down so you're gonna eyeball this and make sure that it's about in the center a little more than the center let's do a little more let's go ahead and put it about right there lay it down pray that it's straight and burnish like crazy okay all righty there we go there is our back cover okay so we're going to go ahead and do the other side before we start folding everything in. So what did I here it is? And it is. So I'm going to turn this up this way. We're going to work from this side. So you see it's going to overlap just a little bit right there. That's okay. That's what we want. Okay. Um, about like that. So, probably what we should do is run a little piece of tape right down here so that that will stick. Let's just do it right here for now. Okay. Yep. It's stuck. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so we'll go ahead and pull this off. We will go ahead and pull these off. It might be easier to do it from this direction hope you can see this without me flying all over everywhere okay there we go put that in the tray 
Now we're going to even this up. It's going to make this as flat as we can everywhere so that it lays down good the first time. We're going to make sure that it is centered. And we're going to lay it down very carefully. Very carefully. Burnish again. Turn it over. Uh-oh. Well, it was a boo-boo, wasn't it? Yes, it was. That's okay, because we're going to put something on the back of this, so it's not going to matter. Okay. What do we think? Hmm. What do we think? I don't really know at this point. Um, it's a little crooked. And we have this. Now, this is not a problem. Um, well, there's my little bottle. I have this awesomely wonderful stuff. And it is called Undo. I know most of you have probably uh, come across it before. And it will take tape up that has been laid down. And it comes up really easy. And you just pull it off where you don't want it. We're not going to worry about this little booby right here because I am going to put a piece of lace on the back and that will help cover that up. Okay. Now, as this starts to dry, be very careful, and it gets really icky and gummy. So if we need to put some more on there, we'll put some more on there. Um, my little sprayer, for some reason, isn't wanting to work. So This is awesome stuff. Um, I bought mine at Walmart here in uh, our little town. Um, they sometimes have it on the shelf and sometimes they don't. So it, it's kind of iffy, but you can buy it at walmart.com and they will ship it to your home or they will ship it to your local Walmart and you can just go and pick it up. So you can still get it. In fact, I buy it by the gallon. Um, okay, now then, when it starts getting down to little nubbins I use, well, it does make the tape extremely sticky, so, um, it's going to get on your fingers, we can use our little tool here to get the residue up, makes it much easier. And then it just rolls off. So if you extend too far, that's okay. Get your little bottle of undo and run it on there and fix that puppy up because it will work. There we go. <laughs> it does make your finger sticky. So let me get a little bit of this off of my fingers. And I need to get another uh, little spray attachment here. I don't know if it's gummied up because I know this stuff is very uh, caustic, I guess. Um, and so, there we go. Now, it will not hurt your paper. It makes your paper look wet, but um, it dries very quickly. And there we, there we go. There we go. All right. 
So, before I turn this over and spill it all over everything, let me put that away. And let's turn over and look at the other side. Where I have that tape stuck to my little, that's why I moved my thing. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to fold this corner, this side up. And that's why I left this open because it does make this little section right here um, a little stiff. So, go ahead and get it all the way to the end. If it sticks a little bit, that's okay. And then we're going to do this side and fold it down really nice and smooth. Now then, this is kind of one of those controversial things. Um, I like to cut my little corners. And so I cut right here at an angle to this corner. And then I turn it around and cut this way at a little angle right to where it meets okay that removes all of this bulk some people fold it down and that's fine if you like doing that that's fine um i just like the the less bulk in the corner and so i cut these little corners down just slightly Okay, now then, we can run some tape here, we can run some glue here, however we want to do it. Um, I think for the edges, we'll maybe just use some Fabri-Tac glue and put it on here. Fold this down really good and smooth. Pack it down. And do the other side. Oh, I hear the dog going nuts outside, so that must mean that the UPS man is here. Our dog barks like she's something big and ferocious but uh, she would show you into the house and show you where everything is in case you want to take something so um she's not what i'd call a good watchdog but she is an awesome dog now then all of this has kind of cracked a little bit here that's okay i'm not going to worry about that we're not going to worry about it Okay, so we're going to come over here to this side. We're going to do the same thing. Cut our little corners. this side oh. uh, yeah that's correct I thought what in the world am I doing and then we'll cut this side ever so slightly slanted inward and we will do the same thing fold it up to start training it it cracks that's okay that's quite okay I'm going to ink all the way around it anyway and I kind of like those edges when they've they've kind of cracked a little bit because it makes it look a little more vintage to me so I don't worry about that um, again 
I did not put our Fabri-Tac glue down. And fold in. Do the other side. that little strain keeps coming from but it seems to want to play today make sure this gets good and and tucked down Outside of our book, we're going to train it, train it to fold over. Turn over and train it to fold over. And we're beginning to see a beautiful little book take place. Look at that. Now then, we need to fold in our edges here, and I'm not going to ink these. You could, but I'm not going to because I'm probably going to put something over that anyway. Um, if you prefer, you could also continue to use your double stick tape here. But it is so expensive, especially when you get the really wide things, wide rolls. And so I tend to not use it if I have something else that works equally as good. Okay, so we've got that folded in. Fold down our, I'm not going to worry about our corners too much because I'm going to put little corner things on there. And we will do this side. It's really a shame to have to cover up that pretty girl there, but um, she just didn't fit what I wanted today. So I'm going to fold that in. Now, this little corner is kind of sticking out just a little bit more than I want it to, so I'm just going to snip that off. Snip this one off down here. Okay. We're going to make it look really, really nice. You can get your bone folder and crease this down in here really good to help that paper learn what it's supposed to do. And it does, it does eventually mine. These little papers are sticking out a little bit. I don't want them to do that, so I'm going to trim them off. Like I said, when we ink, it's going to accept that ink, and it's going to be fine. So we'll turn and do this one here. Okay. Now then, you could use... Oh, there's another one right up there at the corner. Um, you could use a colored ink if you want to. Um, but my favorite is Vintage Photo. And so, I know I have some. What did I do with it? 
What did I do with it? Everything on my desk is a mess. I have about 10 things going on all at once. Well, there's my little doobie dauber. So, but I can't find the ink. So, we'll just use walnut stain. That works just as good. And we are going to start right here and ink really good. I really like the dark edges because it just makes it look old and vintage to me. Just keep going around and around. I am going to put lace on this, so I'm not going to worry about where it connects. Um, I have some old vintage looking lace, and I'm going to put that on. work in a little bit how we're going to use that teal piece just because I think it's gorgeous and I think it's the right size and it's the right time. Okay. We're going to also ink the inside. Not only does this give the inside a finished look but it helps these little cracked edges here and our little boo-boo didn't even show. So when we cover that up, cover the back of this, then um, that won't show at all. So, sometimes we just get lucky. Not very often, but sometimes we do. Okay. There we go. One more side. Here. And I do want to delineate the spine from the rest of the book, so I am going to put some ink down there, down the two spines, or not the two spines, but the two edges of the spine. well finished. I'm not going to do the ones on the inside. Um, now, I'm going to wait to decide what's going to go in, in the inside because I like to sometimes, when I have a coordinated book like this, I like for this page to coordinate with my first and last page of my signatures. And so since I'm not real sure what we're going to do about that, maybe we can come back and do another video when we do the, do the inside of the book. Uh, we can, can look at that and see, see what we want to do here and make our spine and put that in. Um, but for now, I'm going to leave it like this, and then we'll see. Now, this is the front, and this is this little piece. And that would be so pretty to do it just like that. And maybe put a little border down here and down here of what I put in the middle. How's that look? That looks pretty cool. I like that. Okay, so I think that we'll glue that on. And have that for our front. You know, we could put that and carry it on over to the back. To the spine. That would be really pretty. And just let it hang off the edge here. Oh, wow, well, yeah. I like that. So I think that if we put this down. And then we could put something over the edge of this. That would work. 
That would be beautiful. Beautiful. So, I think we'll do that. So, I'm going to turn this over. And all of these, let me get my white paper back so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. Um, all of these stitched areas where it's a little more covered, this is net. And if you put the glue on this net, it is going to soak through. And until it dries, it's going to stick on anything that comes in contact. So I only cover these, put a little edge down the side. So let's glue here and maybe here. You can glue these flowers because they're big and they cover a fairly big area. Cover. I don't want to drag my tip when I'm doing this because it bunches up my fabric. It sure is hard to get this on here without dragging it a little bit. Put some here. Put some on these little butterflies because they're they're sequined and they will do good enough, I think, to help cover. Make sure we get our edges. Mm, gonna have to go over a little bit of the of the netting, but that's okay because on the very edges we're going to um, eventually put some lace or some beading or or something on there like that. So, all right. So let's hold this up. Let's get our book. And lay this down. Now you do have a little bit of time for moving, but you don't have a whole lot of time. So I want this silver stretch right here to be right at the edge of our book. And then what I do with my napkin here it is. And then we can fold this down. You don't want to drag it because it's going to pull up your your fabric. Okay. That's got it centered about perfect. Now, isn't that gorgeous? Very pretty. Then once we decide how we're going to do the inside and everything, we'll go ahead and put some lace on here and make this look even more stunning so we'll save that all for another video for now we've got our book cover made out of a Ritz box a Ritz cracker box so start saving all that trash you can make absolutely beautiful things with it so thank you for joining me today thank you for supporting me uh, laughing at me and helping me laugh at my mistakes, and uh, we'll see. We'll see how this turns out. It's going to be gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Stay tuned for part two. Somewhere down the line, we'll do the inside and uh, make this a priceless thing. Thank you again. Please visit my website at pinkdragonflywingswingz.com. See what we have. Check out my other videos. Please like, subscribe, share with everybody you know. And uh, thanks. Bye.